Okay, after uh, sleeping on this last night, I'm gonna, I've decided I'm gonna make my connections with dowels rather than a mortise and tenon um, for two reasons. It's gonna be easier and I think it's gonna be stronger. Now, I realize that this is only going in, you know, about three quarters of an inch, which is what my um, tenon would be as well. But I'll be able to put three of these in here, possibly four, and that's just a lot more glue surface. And um, like I say, I think it's going to be it'll be stronger and faster. But the problem I was running into was I want this to be centered, so I took my jig and I used the spacers that come with it, and uh, the first setup I had. You can see that this hole right here, if I if I registered from this side, uh, you can see that this is, and it's on the edge this way, I guess. And if I registered from this side, then I'm covering the edge of the hole. So it's off, uh, I don't know how much it was off. So then I put a, I, I, I messed around with some shims and I came up and I got close, but you can see when I drilled this hole here, they're still slightly off and overlapping. Made one more uh, little adjustment to my shim, and now I am I'm as perfect as I can get, I'll put it that way. Uh, I'm still going to have to pay attention to which side I'm registering off of, but when I put this uh, registration pin in here and find that mark, there it is, right there. I'm in. And if I pull it out and go the other way, find the hole again. Where are we? There we are, and I'm in. Now it does go. It does go easier this way. I think that's the direction I drilled it first, then this way. But it it does fit, so I'm within I gotta say a, a couple thousandths of an inch maybe. You know, it's not much. You know, I can I can I can get it in there. So that to me tells me I'm I'm centered. Or as close as I'm going to get. So this is my, I had to make a little custom shim here. I used the stock uh, 3 8 Then I had to come up with another eighth, basically, to get it where I wanted. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get started and start drilling these uh, holes. And then uh, we can put it together and I'll be able to figure out my uh, slats uh, dimension which I think I am going to do those mortise and tenon just because they have to float and then uh, you know start putting it together basically so let me get busy and drill some holes here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna drill a couple test holes in this piece and then I'm gonna drill holes in my um, that piece of cherry you saw me using earlier for a spacer just to make sure I get everything lined up I can live with this. A little bit of daylight on this side. I mean, just a tiny bit. This is this is the side I set it to. It's tight, and you can see just the just a sliver of daylight there. So I don't know what that is, but it doesn't matter. It's it looks centered and it looks good. So that's what I'm going to work with right there. That's how I'm going to fasten my stretchers. And uh, I, I'm going to use three dowels. I don't have room for a fourth one. You can see one uh, fourth one would be outside the line there. So good to go. Now there, there, is, a, there is a way that I'm going to have to orient this. I have to be careful that I don't drill, you know, I make sure that I register off the top edge here or the bottom edge, whichever way I want to do it. 
and I'm thinking that I'm going to register off the bottom. So if so if it goes this this would now be my top edge. That gives me uh, this uh, bit of meat right here, I guess, to make my mortises into, and I won't be interfering with that dowel in any way. I don't think I would be anyway, but it's just something to think about. So, all right, let me get busy and start drilling these holes, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I put it together. Here's how I'm going to set up this jig. Um, first of all, I went around and marked all my legs. I'm going to reference off the outside faces of my um, legs. Remember, I made these marks. This is the inside face. So I check mark both the outside faces. That's how I'm going to register it. Now, if you remember this, uh, if I was going to do a mortise and tenon here, this would have uh, been centered. You can see my lines there, here and here. Let me get rid of this one. So here and here are, are the length of my measurements, and this is the outside edge of my of my stretcher. So putting that on the line, approximately centered, that's where it would land. So when I drill my holes in this, I registered off of this face, which essentially will be the bottom face, and I'll, and I'm registering off the bottom edge of the leg. So I know that when I turn this over, these holes have to line up here. And you can see that when I put the jig on, I'm registered this way, here. And now, instead of using a line and you know, sneaking up on it type thing, I'm just gonna use my combination square, put it on the, the end of the board here. I could even do it this way, I guess. Bring my jig up to it, lock it down, you know, snug it up. And now I know I'm, I'm registered off of the bottom exactly where I want to be, six and a half inches. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do to remove any confusion on my part is I'm going to take this, let me get this in focus in the frame here for you there. I'm going to take these two out, these two uh, guide pins, drill, drill guides, I'm going to take them right out so that I don't actually accidentally drill holes up here and uh, ruin my piece. So let me uh, put in the two quarter inch ones here just because I don't like leaving those threads exposed. There, now there's no way my 3 8 drill bit is going into those two holes. Okay, so these three, uh, rotate it, register off of that other outside face, and, and then uh, just I'm going to do all the bottoms and I'll show you how I'm going to do the tops when I get to that point. Perfect.
what? There goes my plan right there. I have to keep those in because I have it's their uh, their mirror images of each other. <laughs> oh well, learn something new there. Even though they are centered, I can't. I have to be consistent and register off of this face. I can't register off of this one and use use these uh, use these three holes consistently. So I'll change these out and put these back in. Uh, first set went well, no problems. And uh, doing the second set here, just going to use my uh, same ruler I did for laying out the uh, mortises, just being basically a hook on my on my rule here. Gives me that registration I'm looking for. And then uh, coming up to this end, same thing, just uh, registering it off the top edge here and then drilling the bottom three holes again. So and then I'll just uh, rotate and repeat. Rotate, turn it up, and then do the other uh, set of legs as well. Check marks on this side this time. And I can put my finger in this hole for hanging this tool and then grab it with my thumb and kind of pinch them together make sure they don't move on me which works out really nice really well make sure I get a good good registration so there it is again I'll drill these three holes and then just uh, repeat on the other uh, three legs okay I don't know what possesses me to do this but I drilled four holes here uh, lucky for me, it's on the top. It will be covered uh, mostly by this. But I am going to fill this hole right now with a solid dowel and not one of these fluted ones. This is a, a little tighter fit. And, and then when I cut this off, that little bit that's going to be exposed won't have the, the, the flutes or the glue showing, I guess. Uh, I don't know, a little brain fart on my end. But, just trying to show you that I do make mistakes once in a while. <laughs> okay. Setting up to do the uh, rails now, and this uh, board is just a little too narrow where the back uh, screw does not, the pad just catches only about a quarter of an inch. That's why I've got this block in here to just support it so I don't ruin that edge. So it worked, I think it's going to work out fine. So again, I'm just drilling these holes and then uh, rotate the board and drill the other three and we'll see how things turn out here.
Okay, so if I rotate the board, I've got my check mark. I'm going to keep the check mark to the outside. So here and here, so I'm just registering off of that, and I'm using this little ruler here to get it flush with this edge. Just snug that up, and I can put my block in here. Get them both snug. Check my flush fit there, that's good. check the fit on this one I'll be right back uh, front and rear on the uh, or the top front and the bottom rear top front bottom front sorry geez top front bottom front stretchers are in and uh, it's perfect so then what the, this allows me to do is to I get this measurement or this cut line right here but it's uh, it's exactly 28 inches, which is uh, what the plan was. This dimension is 16 or six and a half, which is which is what the plan was. Um, this dimension right here changed by a half an inch because I originally had these set at 27 and a half, but uh, I made it 28. So. It's, it's working out good. I'm going to do all the rest of them and then uh, dry fit it all together. And we'll come back and see what that looks like. And, and I'll also cut those legs to length as well. And uh, then I can get some dimensions for the, for the inside uh, slats that are going in here. And the other thing I'm going to do is notch this uh, a little bit right here for that shelf to stick in or that uh, slat to stick in underneath rather than notching the slat around the leg. Uh, that'll, I think that'll be a, a little more pleasing to the eye uh, so you don't see that gap. Alright, there she be. She squares up nicely. I've got uh, just the tiniest bit of light coming through the bottom down here, but you know what? For me, that's that's square. Uh, when I measured or put the square on this side, it was perfect. I haven't done this side yet, though. That's perfect. So uh, this might be just racked a little bit. You know, I got now I got uh, a little bit of light on the bottom. Over here, can I have it on the bottom or on the top? Just a hair on the bottom, I guess. Let me see. A hair on the top. So it could be racked just a little, but I'm not going to sweat that. I'm sure the floor that's going on isn't perfect either. So uh, now this allows me to uh, pull some dimensions here. Let me grab my tape somewhere. So I can pull this dimension here, which is 18 and a half, 18 and a half, which is perfect. So then I just need to decide uh, 18 and a half by 31 and a half. I need to decide uh, how many pieces I want in here 
and what kind of a gap between them. I'm going to wait on that until I get the, I got to get some more material, but, um, you know, I want to make the best use of the material I have. I don't want to have a lot of waste. So if I can use, you know, if I can get four inch boards and it works out, or four and a half or three and a half, whatever works out. And then, like I said here, I want to notch this right there to accept the shelf rather than the shelf wrapping around the leg. I want the shelf to go in through the leg. You know, so I'll cut this back at uh, 45 degrees, three quarters of an inch, and then uh, that'll help that shelf set back in there a little bit. And uh, you won't see that. You won't see this line wrapping around as you're looking down. A so, little bit of a little bit of extra work that way, but no big deal. The tops um, are just a shade high. That's fine with me. I'll just hit this with a hand plane and bring that right into right into trueness there. Um, I'd rather it be that way than than these being a little high. I mean, I can always take them back to the saw and cut them off, but this allows me to get these just just perfect. So. So far, so good. It, uh, it looks good. And then I got to get the top and uh, the other parts done. This is the part. This is the part that's going to be black. Then stained in here. This field will be stained. And the top will be stained to match her other a couple tables that I made for her.